All right. Hello, everybody. So we have some people funneling in here. Everybody, thanks for joining. Um, let me throw a slide up here so everybody who's coming in late knows that we are going to start about five after the hour. Um, so I'll go ahead and throw that up here. All right. Perfect. All right. So as everybody's funneling in here, it looks like we got about a little over 30 in so far. We had quite a few sign up. Um, we're going to go ahead and just kind of give everybody a few minutes to get in here. Uh, another four minutes here. Um, yeah. So we'll let that happen. Uh, Chris, Lars, how you doing? As I said before, living the dream, brother. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> got to live it. All fine. Yourself, Lars. Good, good, good to, to see some you. old good to see some old friends from IGEL. Uh Lars, how's the how's the weather by you? You're uh, well, you're coming oh, from us from where in Germany? It's, uh, it's a it's a lot warm currently. So it's in East Germany. It's between Leipzig and Dresden. So it's for I think two hundred kilometers from Berlin and also okay. uh, four hundred from Frankfurt. So it's in the east border uh, to, to Poland. And so I'm the the only IGEL guy who, who who lives in East Germany, so this is also something special. But I'm with my new role uh, together uh, together with some colleagues working now all over the world. So not so not so many times at home, but today at home, like you can see, all is on IGEL on my on my office. <laughs> it's a little bit warm, but fine. It's summer. Very cool. Yeah, we. Uh, I mean, you know seeing as basically everyone on the call will be either American or Canadian. Um, it's good that you tell us cities we know over there, like Berlin and Frankfurt. Uh, it's kind of like, I remember Simon Richards at IGEL saying the way Americans view the UK and it was just London everywhere, right? That's all we know. We know London, any other city we were not really sure about, but, uh, but yeah, very cool. So, so, uh, so how far are you, I'm trying to think about this then. So how far are you, what would, what would border you, what's, what's your furthest border or closest border, I should say. Um, is, you... is, is, is Poland. Poland, okay, very cool. Yes, Poland. In, in the east is Poland, and in the in the south is Czech, Czech Republic. Okay. So, uh, the interesting the interesting thing is that the the, the capital of Czech Republic, Prague, Prague is uh, is is uh, much more uh, easier to reach than our capital. So it's not so many kilometers away. Sometimes so it looks like you're near near anything, but. Uh, it's in the, I think the region is really cool. It's, uh, it's green, I have a lot of trees and a lot of hills and yes, I like to, to live here. Very good. Well, you know, I, I, I just moved to a place uh, where hills don't actually exist. I moved, I just moved to Florida um, and uh, it's, it's basically just flat everywhere and uh, with some swamps, you know, uh, some would call it a swamp overall, but we, I love this swamp. It's really nice. Um, how about you, Chris? How's the, uh, How's the weather by you, man? You guys still in that so, heat wave? No, goodness. Uh, it was interesting. We had like, it felt like it was just blasting, you know, 90 plus degrees every day, a hundred and, and, but in the last week, since like Saturday, we had a cold front come in and it's been this way. So 60s, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, upper 60s, I should say, and, and or low 70s, low, lower humidity. And so it's been really nice. A little taste of fall in uh, the middle of August. But I, I suspect that will change at some point. Right now, uh, I'm not complaining. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for a little bit of cooler weather. Um, although not as cool as I'm used to from back home. But you know, I'm in the northern east part of Florida, so we basically we still get some sort of seasons. Um, you know, just just not uh, not the extremities I'm used to. So, but you're you're you know you're you're seasonal. You get all four. So. That's good. All right. Well, so we got one minute here. Um, and uh, let's see, we got about, about 41 people in. Very good. All right. Five after. I'm going to go ahead and kick it off, guys. Um, so uh, let's go ahead. Can you guys see my screen okay? Integra Agile Workshop. Everybody see it? Yes. We can okay. See. Very good. All right. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining. Um, my name is Patrick Toner. I'm going to be uh, kind of 
uh, running as the host here for the uh, IGEL uh, Zintegra workshop. We do these every month. Um, and just so you guys know, if you're new to this workshop, um, I do see some familiar names here. So welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, but if you're new to our um, IGEL workshops, we do them monthly. Um, so I'm, I'm usually on with uh, Chris Feeney here, who is an uh, IGEL sales engineer uh, who specializes in the channel. Chris and I actually go way back. We, uh, we were uh, back when Chris was another company called Improvata. I was an Improvata customer. So we started IGEL about the same time. And uh, I'm also joined, uh, we're joined this week uh, by someone who, I'll, and I'll do int formal introductions here in a second, but uh, somebody who we we're very excited to have on uh, because he wrote the guide that we will be using for today, uh, the Agile UCC guide, and that's Lars Glockner. That Lars, uh, great to have you. And and so everybody, just 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 so you understand like what we do here, we do this workshop monthly, and um, the idea is to go technical, right? So at, at Zintegra, we we have webinars, workshops, and boot camps. Um, you know, webinar would be more of maybe marketing, high level type stuff. You know, just get company messaging. Uh, in the workshops, we try to be, um, you know, more technical. And of course, a boot camp would be hands-on if you guys had a lab. Uh, we don't have one of those with Agile yet. Who knows? Uh, maybe, maybe someday we will here. Um, but we, we try to do, we do one a month and we try to do a topic one month. And then the off month, we do an Agile Ready Partner. Um, so we're lining one up for next month. We'll have an announcement for that shortly. Um, but, you know, just, just, uh, just. You know, definitely, if you're if you're interested in Agile, it's a, it's a great way to learn about technology and learn how things are done and see it actually done in the trenches um, as we kind of get our roll our sleeves up and get our hands dirty here. So, uh, you know, thank you again for joining. And, uh, you know, so just just to kind of talk a little bit about the Agile's Integra partnership, um, you know, we we are what's called an Agile elite partner with services specialization. Uh, there's only a handful of those types of partners in the United States and Canada. Um, and basically what that means is uh, we're the highest level of IGEL partner and um, we can we can provide services on behalf of IGEL. Um, so we have a, a fully staffed services uh, organization. We do everything from services to managed services um, with all of our core technologies, IGEL being one of our core five technologies, um, along with you know, Citrix, VMware, Microsoft, uh, ServiceNow. Fortinet has actually be, has become one of our core technologies. So we're going to be expanding that a little bit. Uh, but Agile is, is a huge part of our business. Um, so we, we can kind of do everything you need with Agile, uh, you know, soup to nuts, um, from, you know, selling licenses all the way to providing services or managed services. Um, so Agile is a very important and crucial part of our business here at Zintegra. As for myself, uh, I'm a solutions architect at Zintegra. Uh, as I was chatting with uh, Chris and Lars about, I was uh, I just moved to Florida. So I'm in the Jacksonville area. Um, I moved from the Philly area where I'm originally from. Uh, we've been here about six weeks in our in our new house here, so uh, we're we're adjusting to the Florida heat for sure. Uh, I've gotten a few sunburns. It's been uh, it's been good. So um, I, I should start buying stock in uh, suntan lotion companies because it's definitely more of my money's going into it. Um, anyway, so you know I've been in the EUC space about twelve years or so, um, and I, I joined Zentegra from IGEL. I spent about four years at IGEL as a sales engineer. I covered. Um, uh, the New York market, so New York City, New Jersey, um, you know, the Philly area. And um, and then I took a position at Zentegra uh, back in November and then relocated down here. So it's been a really good uh, good opportunity. A little, little bit of my uh, previous background before Agile, I was actually an Agile customer. So I was working in healthcare. I've uh, worked in industrial contracting, all in EUC type roles. I mentioned that's where I met Chris here. Uh, when, back when I was working at a hospital in uh, the Philly you area. You were a customer of mine. That, that's true. And we actually yeah. didn't, funny story about that, we didn't know we were both joining IGEL until we showed up to in that San Francisco. San Francisco. I was like, wait. To the event. <laughs> we were looking at each other like, hey, weren't you with Cooper? Was it Cooper? Yeah, Cooper. <laughs> so this one of those small world funny things. Um, so on a personal side, you know, I'm a husband of uh, my wife, Rosina. We have four kids. Uh, I like to serve in my, my local church. I serve in an addictions ministry. Um, I've been doing that for uh, the addictions ministry about a year or so now. So re really enjoy that. Um, and um, yeah, just, just really, uh, really happy to be on with you guys today. So as for Zentegra, why I joined Zentegra, it's probably, start, it's probably good to know who Zentegra is. Some of you guys on the call might be new to Zentegra. Um, you know, and here's a quote from our founder. It says, and this is from our founder, Andy Whiteside. Zintegra was born out of a need for customer enablement and true partnership. 
And, you know, I, I actually had a chance to meet Andy before he started Zintegra. Uh, I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina a couple of years back in uh, like 2008 to 2011 um, time frame, 2009 to 2011, something like that. Um, and I knew Andy when he worked at Citrix. So he actually left Citrix to, fi- to start Zintegra. And Andy basically saw what a lot of us see in the field, that there's a lot of partners out there in the Citrix and iGel, Microsoft community, um, who don't really provide a lot of value. You know, we're, we're called VARs, value added reseller. And Andy thought, you know, hey, there's not a lot of partners showing true value uh, and true partnership. So that's why he, he started Zentegra. Um, and, you know, so we're, we've been running about a little over 10 years strong now. Um, and that's exactly what we do. We try to bring value to all of our core, um, you know, technologies. Um, so here's, here's a few of the ones that we see day in, day out. And by the way, these are technologies that we don't just uh, sell and service, but we use them internally. Um, so all of, all of our uh, internal devices and uh, solutions are all based around these technologies, Citrix, Microsoft, AWS, Agile, Liquidware, Nutanix, ServiceNow, VMware, you can add control up. Um, as I mentioned, Fortinet has, be- has really become one of our core technologies. Uh, we've just seen that, that business growing substantially. And we, we just live and breathe this stuff. You know, we're a very technical organization. So it's not just a bunch of sales guys running around trying to transact. It's integral. We really are uh, truly geeks at heart, to be honest. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, we have a couple different components of our, of our company, right? So we, we are resellers. We do, uh, as, as I mentioned, value added resellers with a capital V. Uh, so we can, we can sell you any of these solutions, whether it's licensing or, um, you know, any type of, uh, services around it. Um, we can also provide services. So, um, you know, we have, a, we have a, hu- a huge bench of engineers, especially when you get into the VDI digital workspace type, type technologies, you know, your Citrix, your VMware, your iGel. Um, we, you know, we have a full bench of guys who are, are just ready to go. So that's really cool. And then we do all kinds of other uh, custom solutions. Uh, ultimately, we're a solutions-based organization. You know, we're not just trying to sell you something. We want, we really, a lot of us have been in that position of, of admin or, you know, a, deci- a technical decision maker in the companies we've worked at in, in, you know, previous roles. So, you know, we kind of like to leave with that empathy and, and knowing what you're dealing with um, to give you the best solution, because we don't just want to sell you something. We want, we want to, we want to actually provide a solution um, that you can be proud of and that you is going to make your life easier and maybe get you promoted internally because you're providing such a great solution for your end users, for your customers. So a couple things uh, just point out. Um, we have a few web pages I'd like to just make you guys aware of. We, we have uh, go to Zintegra.com. You can find all of this, but we have an events page. Uh, we are, we do a lot of events, um, you know, and obviously things are picking back up for in-person events down here in Florida. They really never stopped. Uh, but, you know, other parts of the country where they're starting to get uh, back up and going, um, you know, definitely keep an eye out, see what's in your area. Um, we have, we have a lot of great stuff, everything from, you know, baseball games, uh, you know, we, we did some NBA, NHL, who knows, maybe some NFL games coming. Um, I saw there's a sunset cruise in Tampa in September, all kinds of cool stuff. So take a look at that, you know, see what's in your area. We'd love to see you out there in person, meet you guys in person. Uh, we also do webinars. I mentioned, again, these are more high level company messaging. Uh, you can find them at Zintegra.com or webinars.zintegra.com. Uh, we also do podcasts. Uh, Chris and I are on a weekly Agile podcast. Um, it's called Agile Weekly. Uh, we, we do that with our uh, founder, Andy Whiteside, who's our you know, founder and CEO. Um, we have a lot of fun on there. You know, we, uh, we, you know, we do every other week, we do a community topic uh, with Sebastian Parasad, who's, who's running the community over at Agile. Um, I guess formally running it now that, that Doug Brown is, is no longer with Agile, I'm not, not sure. But um, you know, he's just a wealth of knowledge. And we'll, we'll usually cover a blog from Agile.com or AgileCommunity.com and you know, just kind of talk through it. So really good stuff. We also have them for Citrix, uh, VMware, Microsoft, Nutanix, all of our core technology. So uh, check them out. You can listen to them on any major podcast uh, platform. We also have an entire staffing division. So um, this is something if you're, uh, well, you know, I guess if you're in either camp, if you're looking potentially for another role, or if you're a decision maker and you're looking to hire, um, you know, as you, as you guys might imagine over the 10 years Integra's existed, We've gotten pretty entrenched in the different Citrix user group communities, um, and we have, we just know a lot of people, a lot of connections. So um, we do staffing all over the country. We've had people say to us, "Hey, I'm looking to move to Florida. You know, is there anything down there?" 
Um, so if you're if you're hiring and looking for for true talent in the digital workspace arena, um, you know we can get you really good quality candidates instead of you know uh, people you may not know of if you're looking at Dice or Monster or some of those. Um, uh, so you know if you're really if you have a need there, reach out. We'd love to talk to you guys about it. Also, I'd like to mention this, we do what's called a free micro assessment, and that is absolutely free. Uh, we offer them for Citrix, uh, and now we offer them for iGel. So we'll, we'll come in, it's about a one hour assessment, and then we create a SWOT analysis, kind of show you your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, the how, how high of a severity they are. Um, it's a really good kind of health check level set. Um, it's not quite as involved as what iGel, they, they have a full health check with a little more involved. But if you're just looking for just a baseline, uh, you know, for your environment, uh, we do that for free. And uh, so by all means, reach out. We'd love to get you guys on the schedule. Also, would like to mention um, another organization, Computers for Community. This is also an organization founded by Andy Whiteside. Uh, and this is a, a charity organization. It's kind of a sister organization for us. Um, uh, so basically, if you, have a, if you have a need to get rid of old equipment, uh, you're looking to just donate it or get rid of it. Um, you can donate it to Computers for Community, uh, where we will repurpose it um, with, uh, you know, um, we'll wipe the drive, repurpose the device, and then we'll, we'll donate it to a charity, either in need or a charity of your choice. So it's a really great cause. Um, you know, definitely, if, you, if you're in that position, uh, we'd love to work with you there. And uh, we can put you in touch with someone over there, Computers for Community. All right, the Bronco giveaway. This is exciting. This this one here. This is something that uh, we just gave away. Uh, brand new Bronco. Um, you know, we're now. I'm hearing rumors, rumblings that this is coming back. I can't say anything official yet, uh, but keep an eye out for this. Uh, there may or may not be another Bronco giveaway coming up uh, next year as we go through the year here. So just keep an eye on that. I wanted to kind of throw this teaser out there. If you know, if you if you didn't win the the, the one we gave away, which is pretty good chance if you're on this call seeing there's like 40 or 50 people on here you probably didn't win it um unless you did win it let us know in the chat we'd love to hear it and how you're liking it all right guys we're, we're going to be giving away a grubhub i've been told i cannot say gift card it's a grubhub voucher you just said it i did say it <laughs> i did say it uh so voucher I, it is a voucher grubhub voucher just very important uh you know i don't know if it's an irs reason or what it is uh, but really, guys, the main thing is uh, a voucher expires. So basically, you're going to get this in your email as you sit through the, the workshop here. Uh, Samantha and our marketing team will be sending this out. And the, the key thing to point out here is vouchers expire at midnight. So, uh, you know, when you get this voucher, either spend it for lunch or dinner uh, or late night snack, uh, whatever you want to do. But just know that if you don't use it by the end of the night, it goes away. It's use it or lose it. So uh, just wanted to make that key distinction there. All right. So as I mentioned, we're, uh, we're going to be talking about iGel today. And specifically, we're going to be talking about unified communications. Uh, so I don't, probably don't need to tell you guys this. Uh, I think it's pretty much the elephant in the room. We all know this. Uh, COVID changed a lot of things for the world of digital workspaces and VDI. Um, you know, pre-COVID, all of us were going into offices five days a week, pretty much. Um, some of us maybe worked from home. I personally, uh, guys in the sales world, we were kind of either working from home or traveling. Um, but, you know, unified communications went from something that was, you know, a, a fairly important topic to basically the most important thing that we were all dealing with. Um, how do we get people at home using VDI um, to, to use these, these apps that we, we need now more than ever? Zoom and Teams, WebEx, you know, even uh, apps like Ring Central. Um, you know, we're, we're all of a sudden, you know, we were mostly in person. Now we're all remote. We're, we're relying on these types of technologies. So it's, it's a topic that has been a hot topic really for the last two years. Um, it's ramped up in importance. Zoom uh, was a company that maybe uh, many people didn't hear of before the pandemic, and now they're a household name. So um, it, it really changed a lot of things. So we're going to be talking about this topic today, um, you know, and, and just going through the configuration. We're going to focus mainly on Citrix. We're going to get into Azure Virtual Desktop. If we have time, we'll, we'll show some VMware type stuff too. But I want to introduce uh, my co-host for today. Um, we're going to start with Chris Feeney from iGel. As I mentioned, uh, we go way back. Uh, Chris lives in North Carolina. He's got 20 plus years of end user computer experience. 
Uh, as I kind of already referenced, he's an Agile Improvada wizard. Anytime I have an Agile Improvada question, I don't know, I go to Chris Feeney. So, um, Chris, would you like to say a few words? Thanks for joining. A few words. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> don't say a gift card, whatever you That's say. Right. That's right. No, uh, excited about today's topic. Uh, um, I love this is hands on, right? I mean, this, this, uh, there's a lot of pent up kind of uh, how do I set this up, right? Especially when uh, I think it was Citrix that was the first one that came out with Teams optimization late 2020. And, but there's a lot of confusion about, you know, how does all this come together? What am I, you know, and then uh, Lars, a labor of love on his part, he was, you know, had a huge big, uh, part of kind of pulling this information together and producing what is now uh, an amazing uh, community available product uh, called the UCC guide, which uh, if you haven't seen it, it's very simple to get to, but um, uh, it's kind of like uh, back in my day when I was getting into and understanding Epic accounts and in, in healthcare, we at Improvata had a guide and I would refer to that almost every single day, even though I knew it probably in my head, I always went back to make sure I didn't miss something. And that's what I, see is this UCC guide. Lars does a really great job of keeping it up to date. And today we're going to get into it. So um, um, like you mentioned earlier, I have forced myself to use the product that I talk about. And so I am on an iGel device today, remotely connected to my machine. And then we're going to get into uh, an ABD and kind of show you how all this kind of works. Uh, and uh, we're excited to do that. So I'm going to pass it over to Lars, uh, our friend from Germany. So uh, Lars, take it from here. So oh, hi everybody. So it's uh, really a good experience for me to be on this call and thanks for the invite. Uh, so I think mostly of the people will not know me because um, I'm normally in the background. So I'm working at advanced services. So this is the actual world for professional services. And I'm since uh, the 1st of April this year was um, um, jumping to a new role, the, the ITIL principal solutions architect. And within this role, I'm helping the whole company and also the customers and partners worldwide to do to, to what? To implement UCC uh, solutions. So because like I've seen, the UCC guide was, I think was born as a, as a situa in, a, in a situation, the pandemic came and every guy in the company asked me every time, okay, how I can configure Zoom, how I can configure WebEx. And there was a day where I said, okay, this cannot go so further. I need to change anything. And then I began to write this document. And at the, at the beginning, I think that was only text in the document and it was uh, five pages. I have the full history. I think there are now uh, 60 different versions uh, on the, so at the beginning, I changed the version every week. So now I, it's a little bit more professional. Now I do it one times uh, a month. But at the end, it's it's really interesting for me. Maybe some something from my background. So I'm I'm and this is a, a little bit of interesting stuff. I'm on iChill since December 2019, so it's not so long. Uh, before I was uh, on <clears throat> on Hitachi Vantara worldwide uh, storage company, and I designed some servers HHCI with uh, VDI solutions. So I I built up uh, VMware and Citrix uh, big environments, and now I'm on the endpoint. So it's even a good a good way at first begin at the servers and then come to the endpoint. And yes, uh, what I do uh, my, the whole day is 50% of my job. I, I act as a TRM, this is technical relationship manager at ITRE uh, Advanced Services, where I support bigger customers, beginning at 10,000 devices to 100,000 devices to control the environments. And the other 50% I spend on helping topics uh, on UCC with free sales, with uh, professional service, with other companies, currently even engaged with APOS. This is uh, audio connecting. So we are working on a better integration of uh, some stuff from APOS, from Japa. I'm also involved in this one. I'm involved with Citrix, with AV, AVD, with the Teams integration. So a lot of things what I can mention to you. So when I began with this, uh, I wrote this guide in my, in my free time. And I think now it's now it's nearly a, a half time job. Very good, very good. Well, you know, Lars, you know, thank thank you so much for joining. And I know you're coming to us from Germany. You're six hours ahead of where I'm at in, uh, in Florida, so you're kind of at the end of your workday. We really appreciate you taking the time. Um, you know, anyone on the on the call who's been in the agile community, I do see some names of uh, guys in the community. So 
Uh, you're probably familiar with Lars and, and I, and if you've ever looked at the guide, you're familiar with his work. And, and like Chris mentioned, um, it's kind of the guy that we all reference. So I think it's awesome to have you on Lars as we, we talk through this and, and get into these topics. Um, you know, real quick, Chris, I don't know if you have anything to share, but I know before we jump in, Lars is going to, sh- you know, jump into his UMS environment. We're going to do a technical deep dive. Um, but I think before we get, before we do that, it's probably good to talk about some prerequisites, some things that, you know, really we need to consider uh, yeah. before getting into it. So um, Maybe, uh, I might share my screen. We'll kind of, um, I like to call this uh, for those that understand uh, or wrote or read uh, Stephen Covey's book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The first habit is called Begin with the End in Mind. So I, you know, I take that into account and I basically like to say, begin with the end point in mind when you're coming across uh, unified comms. So what does that actually mean? Well, some things we've learned in the last two years is that if you're going to offload down to uh, the video and audio down to the end point, well, Zoom, Microsoft, WebEx, they all have endpoint requirements. And so from the horse's mouth, the, the, the source of truth in a sense, this is sort of what we are referencing as far as what the endpoint needs to be able to have at a minimum, uh, certainly anything above this. But uh, if you're going to be running these sessions, uh, the endpoint definitely has to have the horsepower to be able to handle it. And we have had situations where that is not the case. And so what's nice is um, we've provided our partners uh, basically a little tool. And what we've done is we've kind of framed it on uh, what model of IGL thin client. We have a UD2, UD3, UD7, for example. And so we have hardware uh, vendors in the IGL ready program from HP, LG, others. And we kind of map to whatever they have may, may have qualified on our IGL ready uh, page. If you haven't uh, seen that before in the showcase, just go to igel.com slash ready, and you'll see a list there. Um, but this is a really kind of a cheat sheet based on the requirements I showed you earlier. Real quickly, I mean, if it's in red, pretty good chance it's not going to be able to do what you want uh, based on these things. So if I switch it to like our middle tier, let's go with the UD3, for example. I got a little bit more options available to me, but not everything. And so this is just a quick idea. And so if your customer prospect thinking about this or you have a use case and you're not quite sure is my endpoint that i'm looking at i can install agile on it because we don't have tremendous amount of requirements we have you know x86 64 bit at least three gigs to four gigs of ram uh and at least four gigs of disk space obviously a little bit more than that but there are some devices out there that'll be just fine and then there's some that you know won't meet that So this is kind of a guide to kind of get a sense as it will handle those things. And so um, if you're not quite sure or you're you're working with Zintegra, uh, Patrick can can, and his team kind of look at this and kind of give you some guidance. And obviously, if it's a UD7, you know, which is our higher end model, uh, generally speaking, you're going to come across some that are much more. Uh, And it's interesting to know that, you know, uh, Zoom on Citrix or Microsoft or Horizon or Teams or whatever, various scenarios that, you know, not all are equal, interestingly enough. So do your homework. If you're not quite sure, we have tools to kind of help you out, but definitely uh, it's all based on what the manufacturers or the vendors are saying you need in order to be able to handle that. So that's what I like to call begin with the endpoint in mind. And so today we're going to get into uh, the assumption that the endpoint that we're going to work with has that horsepower. Um, and, uh, and then let's uh, let's dig into the meat and uh, hope you guys, if you want to follow along, feel free to fire up a UMS. And uh, I guess we're going to hand over to Lars so we could dig into the UCC guide. Yep. Yep. So, so Lars shared uccguide.com. And, uh, you know, j- just so everybody know, you know, if you want to follow along, um, this is great. Lars actually uh, just shared with us. He personally uh, used this domain to just link directly to uh, the Agile UCC guide that we're going to be talking about, which is hosted on the Agile community. Um, you know, so by all means, go there. Open up in a browser, follow along with us. Uh, but, you know, just a really quick before we get into that, Lars, just to piggyback on what you were talking about, Chris. Um, th- this has really changed the way we talk about IGEL, right? Because uh, previous to, the, to COVID and all the, you know, the, the heavily, you know, heavy reliance on unified communications, especially with Teams, uh, which is definitely the most resource intensive. Um, we were, we, you would talk to customers. I mean, there, was, there were use cases where they need a little bit more horsepower on the endpoint. But generally, that minimum requirement 
of, you know, an x86 processor, two gigs of RAM was pretty much fine most of the time. I mean, there was only a few cases here and there where something was a little low power and we'd say, hey, maybe don't go that way, go with this device. When, you know, teams came out with their minimum requirements, they really changed a lot of things. I mean, you know, to the point where a lot of the hardware vendors are coming out with devices a little bit more beefed up to be able to handle this. Um, you know, would you say, you know, that, that that's a, a fair assessment? I think if there's one thing that I want everyone to understand from the, from the gate, right, is that is a huge consideration. If you're not doing unified communications today, or if you're doing it and having issues, that's the first place, you know, I think you should look is at the endpoint. Is there enough horsepower on that device? Yeah. In fact, um, with the, the nice thing about the Agile Ready program is we have vendors, some of the ones that you work with as well, like Liquidware, Control Up, the, they have tools, analytics, huge. Uh, it, it comes down to a great user experience. We talk about this like, a lot on our, on our podcast. Um, you know, you can be the best at setting up a virtual desktop scenario on-prem in the cloud, whatever. If the user experience is going to be terrible, uh, they will reject it. And, you know, if you're an employee and you're not getting a great user experience at work, you may go find somewhere else to work uh, or complain to a higher level. And, you know, ultimately it just causes turmoil. You know, folks at the end of the day just want to have something that works and does their job. And so, uh, I know uh, Citrix was the first one to have Teams optimization. There's a lot of uh, questions around that we referred to earlier, and a lot of it was endpoint related. And so we have seen scenarios where we've been brought in iGel because maybe a vendor with their own hardware and software couldn't solve the problem, but iGel already had it fixed and the hardware was totally fine. It's just an operating system with all the pieces of the puzzle uh, to make it work better. Uh, but in many cases, we can use vendors like Liquid where they have an assessment tool where they can tell you right out of the gate, yeah, that's that's uh, going to be just fine, uh, and that one's probably going to need to be uh, um, not put into production for a unified comm scenario. Maybe some other workflow, but definitely not that one. So, I think we've talked enough. I want to get into the yeah. console and start digging around. Let's, I'm sure. Let, uh, let's, let's let's get our hands dirty. Let, let's get in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to Lars here. One more housekeeping item, guys. Just so you know, we have a Q and A at the bottom. I'm gonna be babysitting the uh, the, the Q and A chat. We like to keep these conversational. Um, so everybody on the call, you know, if, if a question comes up, put it in the Q&A box. Uh, I'll be watching that. And then as Lars is going through, I'll kind of, uh, you know, pause and, and, and ask the question and we'll kind of address it. So uh, with that being said, Lars, uh, we'll turn it over to you. You know, really looking forward to, to getting into this. Okay, thank you. So let me share my screen. I would say I will share the whole screen and then jump between the... Okay, I think you can now see my screen. Yep. So I think it's a little bit big because I have a, a new a new big Philips uh, monitor up and running. Um, the first what I want to show you is this is a guide. So uh, where we, where you can come from, you see the the URL will then at the end if you type in www.uccguide.com, you will end on files itro.itrocommunity.com. Yeah, only what you need to do, and I, it's sometimes sometimes it's really happy that I also need to mention this to our internal people at ITIL. Sometimes the newest version came not up. You need to press F5 on the on the keyboard because sometimes if there's here right, writing 4.8 or whatever, and then the people, oh no, you have you have uploaded the wrong document. I said no, no, I have not uploaded the wrong document. You have not pressed F5, and then you get the the, the, current, the current one. So this is the, every time the same page, and then you get at the last document. Currently one, like you see, we have uh, 18th of August and uh, it's now one month old. Uh, I, have a, I have an easy explanation for this. I was two weeks on vacation, so I'm a little bit behind now. So I think maybe the next version you will see in the next two weeks, because uh, currently the status is that every time uh, a month I produce a new document. What is the document into? I will only do some housekeeping. I will not go with you uh, through the whole document because you can read by your own. I think this is not needed that we do this together. Uh, sometimes there are some questions. So when when you are familiar, familiar with this document, uh, in the beginning, I provided our own server where I published the, the firmware versions, but uh, 
I get um, a little bit uh, problems with our legal on ITIL because I'm an employee of ITIL and I cannot provide my own firmware stuff. And so uh, all the stuff which is public available, you can download directly on ITIL. And if there's a, a kind like this, this is a private build, you can contact me directly by my ITIL, uh, by my ITIL uh, email address and then you get a, a, a link directly from our support because this is the official process. Or you can contact Christini, he has also from channel presets perspective, he has also all the contacts where I get uh, the, the private build. So I think this is uh, most important. What is also most important, uh, I mentioned this all the time, is UMS. Uh, sometimes it's like, okay, yes, I have the, the right OS, all is working. What is the problem? Why I don't see the new function in the GUI? The problem is sometimes you have the wrong UMS version because if a new OS came out, then all the, uh, all the configurations which are in the GUI will be then added to the next uh, reachable UMS version. So for example, if you had UMS 6.8, which is uh, a little bit older, and you search for some options from 7.181, you can only find them in the registry, but not in the GUI because it was delivered with the next UMS. So please keep in mind all on the, on the same level. And what I do, I test all of this stuff. So this is the, the reason why I can only produce one document a month because I'm one of these guys who only trust in things they have tested by yourself. So my problem is I need to test this. I have here a, a really cool environment. It's all private owned by me. At home, I have 128 virtual machines on five servers. So I have a complete VMware, a complete Citrix, and a complete RDS environment. And I have access to this AVD in, in Amsterdam in, in the Netherlands. So all the stuff which is written here in the document was tested by myself. So you can trust me. If it's not tested, I will not write this down in this document. There are some additional uh, sessions now added in the last time. So some general configuration stuff, like you can see, I will not handle this. Uh, this is a, a cool one. I will mention this. So sometimes there are some pieces available in the, in the background, in the code, which are not official supported, not official supported from Zoom, not official supported from us. But I think sometimes it makes no difference if it's supported or not if it's just working. So what uh, Chris uh, mentioned before is that if you have not the right hardware in place, so for example, you have some older desktop PCs on your company and uh, maybe you have uh, 1000 of them <clears throat> and you have uh, installed IGS, all is working fine. And then anyone comes, and comes to the idea, okay, we want to use Zoom, but you can only use Zoom if you can change the background. And then maybe you go to the specs from Zoom and then Zoom says, no, this hardware is not able to show the background. And then you have a problem because you want to go to the video conferencing, it's not allowed. And then you can use this smart virtual background. Smart virtual background means you can use a virtual background on every machine, even if the machine is not officially supported from the hardware specs list. There I have uh, produced this little command, so it's, it's not, not, it's not rocket science, like you said, it's a set command. All of, all of us, they are familiar with uh, Linux commands. This is an easy uh, command where you can change something inside a file without uh, editing the file and changing this. So the only what I do is I change the, the value, the, the, the standard value normally is there that smart VB is not enabled. And with this command, smart VB is enabled. And if you just start this, then you can, even uh, if your uh, hardware device is not supporting Zoom with, because of maybe less CPU power or less uh, memory power, then you can use the Zoom virtual background but you just need to have in mind this can maybe uh, decrease the performance a little bit. Hey, hey, real quick note on that, Lars, you know, the one thing I'll just kind of throw out there to everybody and, and, and the beauty of this, right, is we talk to customers a lot and they'll say like, hey, do I need to know Linux in order to use iGel? And the answer is generally no, but the, the beauty of this guide is when you do have these little customizations, um, you're, you know, you're having, you have the command right in there and the screenshot to just show where you need to put it. So you can, it's just very easy to replicate. So, so anybody watching, I mean, you know, this is something that uh, if you have a need for any of these features, um, it's really simple to put these in place. So, you know, def definitely great work, Lars, on, you know, making it nice and palatable for everybody.
May I, uh, thank you. I, I think this is uh, this is also what I have. So, so when I when I started to write this, I, that so it was my I think it was my my own requirement when I okay, which uh, which kind of uh, of document is helpful. And uh, when I remember to some uh, for some uh, former engagements where I was working, mostly guides they have one or two pages but no picture. At the end of the day, you have read all of them but you cannot remember because we are visual people. And if you have a picture, you can easier uh, remember what you have seen. And so this was the reason. Okay, I said when I will write such a guide, this is nothing uh, without any pictures. And what I currently do is, and this is also maybe a, a, a little bit special, we have some different colors in UMS, but mostly of uh, the people install UMS with gray and gray. And so my my guide uses the blue color in the UMS. So to to, uh, to to show you, okay, you can also change the color in the UMS. So all the mostly of the of the newer screenshots are the blue color. And maybe if you scroll down, you see I have two UMS servers. So it's in it's in cluster. The one cluster node has this color, and the other has have this color. So this is the reason why I have uh, different colors also in the pictures. Okay, let us hand over to, to Citrix a little bit. Like you can see, all the screenshots are there, but like I said before, I only want uh, to show you how the guide is written. You can find all the stuff here, but I will now end this because uh, we are not on this uh, webinar together that I show you what is written in the document. You can show this, uh, you can look in this by yourself. What I want to do is, I want to show you the environment, what I have. I hope you can see this now. Is this now visible? I, I, we see the UMS. The yes, little, UMS is little, visible. Okay. A little small, but you know, I think I think we can kind of. I think it'll be good okay, for reference. I, yep. Yes, I, I think uh, it will. Yes, now now it's a little bit bigger. So what I want to show you is how it is how this guide will be populated. I have uh, yes a lot of profiles you can see, and when I started here, I this is what you can see also in the guide. This is the name of the profiles because. Uh, what I what I uh, think is really important. If you create a profile in UMS, it's uh, important uh, to to mention correct what is in the profile. Because if you only say okay, this is profile one, and every time you need to click into okay, what is in this profile? And so what I normally use is uh, in the name. It's okay in this profile. You have Citrix, you have MS Teams, you have Cisco WebEx, and you have Zoom, and you have the Citrix Workspace app 2007. So with one view, you can uh, look at it and you see what is in this profile. And this is now based on the, the, the last version, so private bit 11.7.181. And uh, for example, this is also working in the machine where I'm working with you now because I'm connected uh, with my, I have a Lenovo ThinkPad. It's an X390 with also a touch screen. And there's iOS installed and I connected to a, a ABD cloud PC and uh, there I'm running all this stuff. Hey, hey, real so when quick, we real look now was... into this, Yes. Uh, um, just, just for everyone on the call, you know, I, I, I don't know if I, I think I, you, you each have to set our own, but if you're having trouble seeing this, um, you know, if you go to view options, you can go to zoom ratio. Uh, if you set it to hundred percent or one fifty, you, you, you know, it'll, it'll make it a lot bigger on your screen. Um, just, just for everybody on the call who's following along, you know, if you want to, if you want to do that, it'll make it a little bit easier to see. Um, at Lars, uh, yes, th thanks for ultra this. high resolution. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, it was changing. I, I had I had two ISO uh, uh, 20 22 inch uh, displays before, but uh, there there is currently one one topic which what is uh, on AVD. Uh, on AVD we currently only support the first display for Teams optimization. And if you have two of them, then you have the problem. The one is optimized, the second is not optimized. So this was my my private idea then to change. The, the two displays with one with one bigger one so that the, the full display is teams optimized. So this was the, the, the private uh, information behind. When you look into, you can see there's a lot of stuff which is uh, configured. Uh, I think mostly mostly of you are familiar with them because it's not only the, the stuff is not uh, not all of them is related for UCC communications. But what I want to highlight, and this was the reason why I said, okay, let us go to the UMS and uh, let us go only one time to the Citrix configuration. But there's a lot of things inside what is not mentioned in the guide because uh, at, the, at the beginning, when I start to write this, uh, I had only uh, thought, okay, I only want to cover how you can configure Zoom. Then it came, okay, how I need to cover also which protocol you need to do. And at the end, it will be flown, flown and flown and flown. And then maybe uh, if I would 
at all the stuff what I can mention because of the history and of the experience, I think the document will be have 500 pages and then you will not be able to, to read it anymore. But in such a session like, like a webinar, I think it's much more easier also to go through some, uh, through some configurations because sometimes it's a little bit difficult to say, okay, this is a general configuration and one size fits all. We know this, okay, every of our customers have different environments or we have also in, in, in the company, we have different environments. For example, uh, mostly times, I think uh, till end of 2021, most the customers uh, drove uh, Citrix uh, 1912 LTSR. I think this was the most common version, which is up and running. Some of the people also are working with uh, the, 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 the not LTSR version, so the current one. They have the, the newer VDAs up in place. So some have Windows 10, some have Windows Server. And so we need a configuration which fits all. And I, I would say this is not possible. You cannot have one configuration which fits in all these different environments. And so I want to give you some insight what all these points, not all these points, but some important points can end in. For example, there is this cache size in, in, in kilobyte, what is here, which I set to uh, uh, 2048. Uh, so mostly of the people here, okay, what what is what what this makes not any sense? Why I do this? This is 1024 at a, uh, at, a at a standard, and this is enough. I would say yes if you never if you're never working with any communication stuff, or if you're never working with any virtual backgrounds, or if you any never working with YouTube, you don't need to touch this. But if you work with some content which is preloaded. This is sometimes important that you get because all our, I think our connections now with the bandwidth are not more in 1972. So I think we have, especially you in the US, I think you have better network bandwidth than we in, in Europe. Sometimes I have the problem that I find some of the connections also for companies where we have only one Mbit. But I think if you have, uh, if you have one, one gigabit or more than that, it's uh, really common to change this value to 2048. So because this ends in, if you start a YouTube, for example, inside your Citrix that is pre-caching, there is this little sign that your, that your, that your video will be pre-cached before it's starting. It's a little bit faster because the cache size is a little bit higher inside the Citrix, uh, uh, Citrix workspace. This is one of these topics. The, the second one, which is really interesting is the audio bandwidth. There is a document in Citrix available where you can uh, you can mention, okay, sometimes it's medium, sometimes it's high. I recommend if you use the current version, LTSR release, this is 2023, please make sure this is on high because there's a change in the Citrix policies. If this is not on high, then there is something a problem with latency of audio content. And like you know, okay, when I'm right, when I'm when I'm speaking here with you, it would be a problem when I'm speaking and uh, the picture uh, and the video uh, ends up in okay what I have said before. So because it's not uh, they had not the the the, the right uh, uh, the, the the right bandwidth, then it will be. It, uh, it will be postponed and then uh, it's not so a good experience for you. So like I said, if it's uh, 1912 LTSR, what you have in place, set it to medium. This was my recommendation, recommendation before, but if it's the newest one, set it to high. This is the, the best one. And if you now want to ask me why this is, I can mention you, but then we need more two hours to mention this. I can, <laughs> I can say you this. The idea behind or the problem behind is uh, with uh, 2023 uh, Citrix uh, involved a new uh, component. This is uh, the adaptive audio. Maybe you have heard from this. This uh, technology was also there before, but is not now in a new version with new libraries. And this adaptive audio controls now how audio is working in the Citrix session. And high is a good one for them. Before with 1912, the adaptive audio was in the, the first version, was the same name. This is every time the problem. If you have two different techno technologies with the same name and you don't know the difference, then you're a little bit struggling with that. But I, I can, uh, you can trust me, uh, if you have the first, uh, the first solution from adaptive audio on 1912, you don't want to have this in high because then you have a really good quality on audio, but your video quality is really bad. Hey, hey Lars, uh, I was going to ask, um, 
because I've noticed it's obviously, uh, especially when the Citrix stuff first came out, there was a lot of fixes uh, on the Citrix side, for example, workspace things, policy settings, whatever. Is it safe to say that uh, there, you know, some of these things are, 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 are not little workarounds or whatever like that, but generally speaking, uh, any issues are going to be fixed in newer versions of stuff, generally speaking. Obviously, bugs are what they are. But, uh, unfortunately you... not. Unfortunately not. I would say uh, uh, currently the biggest my biggest problem is currently on Citrix, because a lot of customers go to the newer the newer LTSR twenty twenty zero three, and uh, what the most of the customers don't know don't, don't do is there is a deployment guide when you make an upgrade from nineteen twelve to twenty twenty zero three. They don't read the, the deployment guide. They just do the update, and then our support gets a lot of work because then they say, "Oh, my ISO is not more working. I have no uh, optimization from Teams anymore. This is crashing or whatever." Because there's a lot of stuff which is uh, changed on Citrix side uh, in the background. So, for example, the difference between 19.12 and 20.20.03, and I only speak about the LTSR release are 76 different policies. So if you don't change your policies and only do the update, then you have a lot of trouble because with NetScaler, UDP ports, TCP, there's a lot of changes there. And uh, what I normally recommend because of our uh, also advanced services customers, we have the same topic. It's like always, you never will, you will never do a Windows Server update before reading the guide, I think. So and this is the same on Citrix. You, I, I will not hope you only you only do the update, say, okay, just trust the upgrade, just click on the button, and then I just wonder, okay, my thousand users cannot work, cannot work anymore. So there's a lot of things in the background. What is better than before is that the mostly things like uh, maybe some some guys can remember at the first we had here an additional uh, an additional section where you can control which protocol you want to use it's tcp it's udp it's falling back and this we have uh, taken out because citrix mentioned all other clients uh, have not this option or they actually had this option and on all other clients it will be configured on the policies inside citrix so mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of uh, more stuff to come, I think, in the next month. Not not to say something what is on the uh, DNA, but uh, I, have, I have some insights there that maybe some some additional things will go back to the policies. But because what is the problem? You can configure the same stuff on the client, on the server, in the policy. But if you have, for example, uh, three different people, one is responsible for storefront, one is responsible for the endpoint, one is responsible for the server, and they don't uh, get in contact with each other, then you can have three different configurations and you just wonder why it's not working. And this is the problem. So the alignment is a, a, a big, a big issue sometimes. I would say if you go, to, if you want to do the best, uh, configure the actual client like it's written in my guide. And then uh, go to your uh, Citrix men on the on the company or to your to your administrators and said, okay, let us look into the policies and let us check which policies we need also to change. And uh, I would say the Citrix documentation is now much more better than in the last years. And uh, if you follow the, the current documentations, you can find anything what you need to do. For example, something like H264 and all the stuff. There's a lot of uh, things uh, into. I appreciate Great. that. And hey guys, we, we have our first question uh, comes from Brandon. And I think I know the answer to this. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a crack. But uh, Brandon's asking, where can, where can he get his hands on that matrix of devices with the UCC products now? My understanding is that is not a public facing document. Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. That there. is that is correct. It is uh, we, we put it together for our partners. So so um, Brandon, yeah. So Brandon, anybody else, if you, if you want, if you need information on that, please reach out to, to us as Integra. We can we can help you get you know all the information you need uh, for those devices. Um, so just wanted to mention that. Yeah, there may be a public version that our product marketing team put together. I need to check on that, um, but. It was basically designed as new IGEL ready vendors would come into the fray. We would just add a column or something with their hardware specs. And then we already had a matrix that kind of mapped to it. So, um, and that it was a fluid thing is we have a lot of IGEL ready vendors that, uh, you know, in the last few months, more stuff was being added. And then the ones that have been in the program, like Lenovo and HP and others, they're, they're adding more stuff too, or 
updating a version that had been previously qualified. Case in point, I learned our UD2, our lowest end model, right? Not the greatest in terms of performance, but it is getting uh, some updates, RAM and CPU. And uh, a newer version of that's coming out. Now, I don't know if it's going to meet the needs of some of the unified comm stuff, but it definitely is getting a little bit of an upgrade. Uh, so, uh, so those things happen. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you got questions. You're not sure. You're looking at hardware uh, partners. Uh, Integra can certainly help you out there. Great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Let us go to the next section, which is really important. This is this one. Um, there are some some kind of struggling in the market, I would say. Mostly of the people said, okay, yes, I have installed, I have installed Teams, I have installed Toom, all of us fine installed, and then I just go here, and then I go to native USB redirection, and then I add audio and video, and then I was just wondering why this is not working. Yes, this cannot work. So this is the right configuration here. If you have native USB redirection sections, you just need to set this to deny, because overall, native USB redirection is in the current world uh, where you have audio, video, and all the stuff not more needed. Only if you have special needs like printers, mass storage, or imaging devices. So what I uh, even do is deny all of this stuff. You can also go it another way, but this is then more complicated. Allow all and uh, deny what is not needed because then you need to have an information which devices are used in your company. So it's, so it's much more easier. So go to deny and then just allow printers, mass storage, and imaging. And now it came to the big question what I get also internal and I actually also in partners, also in customers. Why I should not add out your video here? I think this is uh, a really important information and I want to explain this uh, uh, one time again. There is a difference. What we want with uh, video communication, so with, with Zoom, with WebEx and all the stuff is, we only consume the, the portion of audio and the portion of video from your device. We don't want to get the full device in the session. The difference between the native USB USB redirection and the HDX multimedia is with a native redirection, you get the ownership of the full device to the session. So with all the stuff which is on the camera, for example, if you have a camera, there's also uh, a microphone in it and all the stuff, then you get the full ownership of this camera into the session and not only the picture what you want to transport. And this is uh, all the time if you have real-time communications. I think this is the masterpiece of this. All kinds of devices with real-time communication, you should never add to native USB redirection. I think that's that's crucial what you just said, Lars, because uh, we get this question a lot, you know, and, and sometimes people will, you know, they'll, they're just setting up Agile for themselves for the first time and they'll just redirect everything, webcams, microphones. Uh, you never want to do that, you know, keyboards, uh, the default rule should always be deny, and yes. really the only the devices you need to redirect should be redirected. Uh, a lot of times they're going to be just random peripherals that need to get directed in the Citrix session. But um, you know, just just to kind of take it at a high level, the when you're talking about you know uh, Teams optimization or Zoom, you know all of basically your webcam, your microphone is staying local to the device and your local CPU. That's why the, the specs are so important. The, that's what's going to be handling the video and audio coming uh, in and out of your microphone and webcam. Um, so you never want to redirect. That stays local, and all the all the magic is done uh, locally on the Agile endpoint. Yes, that's right. Okay, let us go to HDX Multimedia. This is the most common section currently, and then I think it's normally really easy. What what, what gets configured there? It's uh, the multimedia redirection should be enabled. HDX real-time webcam redirection should be enabled. And we have this new feature since 609 UMS, when I remember correctly, this is the automatic HDX webcam configuration. And you should set this to the best. So, and then all the other options are not more needed. The only thing is there are something here about a browser content redirection, which is a special topic. And there are something about uh, uh, HDX real-time media engine, which is also only needed if you use Skype. And I hope uh, mostly of the people have uh, seen that uh, Skype, uh, the internet Skype is just no, not more there. So it's not more supported. And the business server Skype, which is just more there, should be uh, migrated to Teams in the, in the next times. 
So this is a great question, this browser content redirection. It's it's come up before. Uh, so it, it sounds as this is a question because I want to make sure folks understand pros and cons, right? With this, you're you know, you're redirecting audio and video and stuff like that for Teams and Zoom and things, for example. If you're gonna do a YouTube video inside a browser, is is this setting here going to improve that experience? Or if that's also a use case, I have unified comms and I need browser content redirection. Is it one of these things like, well, you're going to have to give up one or the other or the uh, virtual um, desktop? Is, I, uh, I would say, yes, I think this is a, it's a quite interesting question. It depends, I would say. Uh, when you have asked me a year ago, I would say, okay, the only way, the only chunks you have, you can go with uh, browser redirection. But now this has changed because with the current versions, we have also inbuilt the, the real-time web RTC support. So we can now also steering browser 64-bit without a browser content redirection. I would never use browser content redirection when I don't need this. So there are sometimes some policies where some people say, okay, I have a special portal in the company. So this is not you to do something special with a, with a training portal or whatever. And for this, we only configuring browser content redirection, but normally it's not more needed. So if you have this one configured here, and for example, this one is, is therefore, uh, sometimes there are applications they have optimization uh, uh, clients, so like uh, Teams, WebEx, uh, Zoom, but there's also possibility you have an application like uh, there was a, the, 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 the example in, uh, in the slide from Patrick, Ring Central, for example, or there's Jitsi, or there's a lot of other stuff, Big Blue Button, I don't know. There's all, it's also popular in, in, in North America, but in Europe, are a lot of additional uh, options out, out and running. They have also a healthcare solution, which is only there in Switzerland. So I think I know now maybe 20 more uh, video conferencing systems we cannot optimize because there is no client for Linux available, but this doesn't, this doesn't mean you cannot execute this and it does, this doesn't also mean you cannot optimize this because if this supports WebRTC, this is the technology and we have built in WebRTC since 11.7. So if you have a, a firmware version from IGS which is higher than 11.7, we have the newest WebRTC engine built in. And then you can also, if you have not a special client on the endpoint, you can also use the normal web RTC in the browser. You just need to use the Chromium browser on iOS. So Chromium, a better framework. This is the, the stuff behind. And this will be transported into, into the Citrix. And if you use Citrix uh, Chrome and or Citrix Edge, because the new Microsoft Edge is also based on Chrome, then you can just handle this web RTC without browser content redirection. Nice. I'm already thinking of some uh, healthcare con uh, customers where they were using uh, uh, inside of the, they were doing like a remote uh, clinic session, you know, where mm -hmm. they are inside the medical record, they click on a link in it and they want to launch their video conferencing tool. And if it yeah. wasn't Zoom or Teams, uh, and, and originally it was that BCR fire up. Uh, so the user on the iGel would see Firefox, for example, pop up or you could switch the default browser to Chromium. Uh, and so it sounds like a lot of that's just been simplified now with 1107. Yes, it's, it's much more better because when I remember correctly in, in early uh, in early 2021, it was like, okay, I have a use case for a video conferencing tool. And then my answer was, okay, there are seven different ways to implement this. And then the customer said, okay, interesting. I only know three, what are the four other ones? But now I can I can go back now. It not, it's not more needed to have seven of them. There are only four remaining. The four are all, all, or even not easy all the time, but much more easier than to compare seven different options. Yeah, that's that's great stuff. And, and you know, and Lars, I have one other question for you on this. It's not not as quite as uh, you know in depth, but I've noticed in your guide uh, the HDX real time webcam redirection is is listed in basically as a prerequisite. So just for anyone who might be wondering, um, do you need to have HDX real-time webcam redirection turned on as a hard prerequisite or is it a best practice when you're talking about team Zoom WebEx? Okay, so there, there's, a, there's a sometimes some, I think some, some, sometimes the problem is maybe the name because the HDX real-time media engine has maybe a little bit the same name like the HD, <laughs> HDX real-time webcam redirection. This one you should have on always. 
this one uh, is because we can see this here. If you if you don't have sky for business, then you take this one out. And if you go back now here, then this is also out because this this one is only needed if you have Skype. If you don't have Skype, you never need this option. But this option has nothing to do with Skype, even if the name is a little bit uh, comparable, I would say. So this is sometimes the problem. So some people said, okay, I have uh, disabled this, and when I disable, I don't also I also don't need this one. But this is not the same stuff. This uh, real-time webcam redirection is the WebRTC what I what I mentioned. So if you disable this one, WebRTC is not working. Got it. So so someone is a Zoom or Teams customer. You know the real-time webcam redirection should always be turned on as well. Yes, yes. Got it. Great. So the, because of performance, because of uh, uh, because of this is a little bit uh, there's uh, the only there's there's only one difference. This is uh, uh, when we can go there, you can see what is what is uh, what is uh, up and running. So we have here Zoom and like like it's mentioned, Zoom and Teams is here uh, activated. There is only one stuff. If you only use Zoom and there's no other thing, if there's no WebEx, no Teams, then you can just disable this because Zoom does not use this. Zoom uh, developed their own uh, process. They definitely also use WebRTC, but they don't uh, don't base on the original from Citrix because they 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 provide uh, their own library inside their channel. So they have their uh, own channel in Citrix, the Zoom channel, and inside the Zoom channel, there's a there's their own library for the WebRTC. All other products need to use this uh, checkbox. Got it. Thank uh, you. Straw poll for those that are attending. Does anybody out there still use Skype for business? Feel free to type an answer while we're moving along here. But <laughs> yes, this would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> good good point. Good point, Chris. Okay, let us go to something what is really important. This is this one. I think this this is currently the most popular uh, uh, section when I go to tickets, when I go to questions. Okay, should I use H264 or should I don't use it? So then my answer is not it's not a no, it's not a yes. It's a, it depends, unfortunately, because it depends on what your hardware can. I would even say if your hardware is uh, is an ISO client, so it's a UD2, UD3, uh, UD7, what uh, Chris mentioned, it's every time a good thing if you use the accelerating because the accelerating is inbuilt in the hardware and you have spent some t some money for this hardware, why not to use this? The problem is a little bit if you have some other devices from other vendors, especially the new mobile work. So I have, like I said before, I've also using a, a, a notebook and there's a lot of other stuff there, what to come up there. It depends a little bit which processor you have in the machine. So if there's a GPU inbuilt in the processor, is there an, an extra GPU inbuilt? So I would, I would say I cannot answer this in general. I can only say if, uh, this machine is on the IT ready partner list, then it's in 99% of the situation so that you can also enable this uh, options. There's only one I know, this is from Charcoal from Spain. I don't know if this is available in, in, in North America. There is the, the, the specs are not so good. So there, this, this acceleration is not really good working. But all the other stuff, HP and uh, HG Chrome I've seen and, and also the, the Lenovo stuff uh, is working with that. The other point is there are this ones because you see here this are normal standard. When I when I uh, change this back to standard, this ones will be enabled. And now we came back to what I said at the beginning. There we have a lot of problems with the newer Citrix uh, versions because with 2023 there is uh, a lot improved uh, in the difference using the codec on Citrix and using there's a policy called visually lossless. Visually lossless don't, don't mean codec lossless. So I don't want to I don't want to train you now in how a GPU is working. But uh, from uh, I think from a point of view from uh, from a human eye perspective, when I change on uh, 65,000 colors pictures, I change you two pictures. You will not see this because our eye cannot control this kind of uh, colors and changing inside. So there is this policy visually lossless and you need if you have 2023 in place so my recommendation is enable the policy use visually lossless 
and then go to the codec policy and use for the entire screen. And I, I will now mention you why. The problem here is the, the, the standard configuration on this is, yes, you can. Uh, so it's like uh, the Linux policy said, okay, choose it by your own. And I say all the times, okay, who should make the choice when you when you set it to choose it by your own? Okay, the endpoint, the Citrix session, the user, who is able to to say what is the right color configuration for this for this VDI session? And I would say, okay, because we are the administrators of the session, we want to have this uh, in our control. So we don't want that anyone else make a make a choice what we should do. So we say, okay, use it for the entire screen. Then you have the best colors that you can have, and you have the H two hundred sixty four support what is needed, and then. The, the best one is the bandwidth is small. You get all these colors out from the Citrix session to your endpoint, and you have a good user experience. So this is the way behind. Like this, these two buttons are only needed. Let this on automatic, and I I would say for the mostly configurations, this is enough. Now we came to something uh, to something special. So what what you have what, what I have shown you was all in degree, but we have the problem that we have two really important configurations. They are not in degree, and they will they mostly are overseen. The most important stuff of this is UDP. Like we are knowing, we have the TCP protocol and we have the UDP protocol, and if you're using real-time communication, you even should. Uh, use UDP because UDP is fast. Then you get a good quality of the of the of the, of, of, of your speaking engine, all this, all the all the stuff. And, but the problem is, there's no GUI section where you can enable UDP audio. And if you have your whole environment configured for UDP audio, but don't activate this on iOS, this will not work. Because what is the problem behind this? Like you know, iOS is read only. So if there's a the dynamic configuration on the Citrix, for example, so let us uh, compare this with a Windows session. For example, you have configured all the same stuff on Windows, and then you get a, a recommendation from your Citrix server. Oh, dear, dear Mr. Client, please, uh, please activate UDP, and then Windows will do this. But if the the the, the actual client gets this from uh, from the Citrix server, then just say, okay, I cannot change this because I'm read only. And if this was not enabled before, then UDP audio will not work. I had a, a bigger customer worldwide. They searched it three months with Wireshark, with all over the network because they have overseen this option. So you, you will never get this up and running if you don't enable this. And there's, uh, there's also interesting stuff uh, since uh, the, the newer versions, there is enable UDP audio. This is locally, I would say. And if you use a Citrix gateway, so if you use a NetScaler gateway or ADC gateway, so there's a lot of names for the same product now in the meantime, then you just also should use this one because I think this is also a big improvement that you can now have a, a NetScaler connection and then you can also have a UDP audio up and running. This makes also the quality much more better. So I think these are my, my two most common uh, recommendations when I get a ticket or when I get involved from our support or when I got, got an email, my first question is, okay, you enabled UDP audio and mostly the answer is where, where I find this. Ah, yes, you have. And maybe the, the first question what I ask, do you have, do you have seen my guide? And then the most, the most people answer, yes, I've seen that. Do you have read any page? Yes, I have, I have read any page. And why you have not enabled UDP audio? It's, it's just there then please go back, look into the guide, and just enable it, and then it will work. The third one, the third one of this is this one. This is the multi, multiple audio device support, which is, I would say, a little bit misleading because any one of us thinking if there's multiple audio device support, this is only audio devices. But there's also video devices behind. So it's a little bit of problem on the, on the parameter. The idea behind here is if you have this, if you don't have this enabled, you'd only see in a Citrix session HDX audio and HDX video. You don't get a name on the device. 
So this is this one. This one makes it possible that you can redirect the device names directly from your endpoint to your Citrix session, and you can see them there uh, with the real name because if you have 10 times HDX audio, I think it will be really difficult to find out which is the headset and which is the internal mic and which is something else because all is the same. Maybe you can click on all of them, but you will never see what is what. And if you just enable this option, you can still see uh, the, the real name and then it's much more easier. So I'm liking the, uh, for a Zoom, like I just clicked on the uh, audio options and I can see a list of microphones and speakers. So enabling this setting allows you to basically expose the actual names of, of those things that are plugged in. Yes. Got it. That's right. Okay, there's a lot more. I think we cannot cover all of them because I will not uh, train you to a Citrix profi in this uh, in this session. So only cover some of them. And mostly of them is uh, covered in the guide. But uh, what is uh, important is this one. There's a configuration uh, under multimedia. We can see there all the stuff is there between the the, the optimization uh, products. So Cisco meetings, Teams. Whatever is there is there. And there we have two products which are really interesting. This is one, one time is Alsa, and another thing is Pulse Audio. Pulse Audio and also the two uh, products which are, which are uh, steering or controlling on a Linux machine how your audio will be used and how your, how your audio will be uh, send it to the endpoint back. So because when we go to the Citrix session, clicking on a video and then the audio will be created and then you get the audio and uh, at the end you hear it on your headphones or on your speakers. And there are some of the, some of the things that are here under Pulse Audio Demon, for example, there's a lot of stuff. So for example, this one, mostly of them are in the standard activated but not all of them. So there's a lot of stuff which, which is uh, also interesting here. For example, frame rate and what, uh, what, what is possible. There's uh, interesting stuff. Uh, what I found out is it's uh, the sample rate you can change when it pulls out you. Maybe you remember uh, the, the, the guys from us, they are longer in this area. I remember, I think on 1992, it's a little bit, it's a little bit early in this, in this phase. I had, a, I had a PC, it was a 286 processor PC, and then I had a 1.44 inch uh, disk. And I had, a, I had a, a game there, what was Prince of Persia. Uh, maybe someone of you remember on that. And the sound was not really cool, but there was sound on the disk. It was for this time, it was really cool. But now with all the stuff, what we have with HD, HD audio and all the stuff, we never want to hear such sound like, like at this time. And there's a problem. There's a uh, there's a possibility. Go here. This is called resample method. With this resample method, you can steering how it pulls out. You should be act inside your machine. Now comes it, uh, why I why I mentioned this. If you have a if you have a headset like I have, and I would always recommend to use a headset. But I know if you have a bigger company or if you have home users. Some of these users will uh, sometimes use the camera and the camera has also a microphone and they want to use the PC speakers. And like we are knowing PC speakers is not even the best, uh, the best stuff, but you can improve also in this time, in this life, <laughs> the quality of your PC speaker. And this is not a joke, it's really easy. You only need to go there, put out your demon, resample method, and you need to change this one to this one. This is the only thing you what you need to do. Go to speaks float minus three, and now the quality is the same like on Windows, because there is a, a configuration uh, algorithm in the in the background which steals your PC speaker and your all the internal stuff. And with this, it's the the sound is much better than before. I like I sent an uh, I sent a recommendation to our developer colleagues and said, oh, please do me a favor and change this to the default because all the all I think all the not so uh, not so uh, not so uh, well known people they don't find this this option and they have only a micro uh, uh, a microphone in the webcam on the PC speaker at home and they are now not really impressed from their uh, uh, IT people can get a lot of better user experience only with this one change. Okay, that's this, that's this for that. So let me go out here. 
And uh, when I remember correctly, we had also the idea that we want to uh, check, okay, what is in for maybe because I have uh, I looked on the on the time, we can also look what is in for VMware Horizon, for example. Then I will also open this one. I have only one profile for VMware Horizon, and I can uh, re really easily show you why because with Horizon it's really easy. It's not that difficult like on Citrix because on Horizon the most of this stuff is built in. You have not so many things to do. The only what you can do, you can go to multimedia and you can say multimedia redirection is on and real time audio video is on. That's it. And with this, uh, you have done a lot of stuff here. What is also there is this one. There's a little bit more complicated than on Citrix before. You have USB redirection, what you can to set to on. And then the default rule, like also Patrick mentioned before, should be to deny. So it's the same what I mentioned to you before. And the options is a little bit the same like before. So this you should also not use. This is the USB redirection, what I mentioned. But this is this two is all the only stuff what you need to change. And then we have the same here, what we can use, Cisco, WebEx, and what we need or assume what we need to activate. And then, then this, there's nothing like the HDX real time, what we have in Citrix, and you need to uh, uh, add additional stuff. You just need to enable this, this option and that's it. And then the, the, the but, but here in, in, in VMware, the, the mostly, I would say, not, would not say a difficult part, but uh, the mostly more important part is then to configure it right on the VDI side, because on VMware, mostly stuff is, based on GPUs or on VMware policies, and then on the right configuration in the, on, the end, on, on the client, on the, on the server, or uh, on the VDI uh, Windows 10. Okay. So this is, this is from this perspective. So, so definitely a lot more simplistic when you're, when you're a VMware customer as opposed to Citrix. Uh, Citrix, you know, it could be viewed as a positive or a negative, right? There's more customization there, but there's also more things to take into consideration if you're a Citrix customer. Yes. Maybe from today, I have a, a great a great hint for you. Uh, sometimes I, it, it's not a UCC hint, but maybe it's also interesting for you. I, I had a, a long time problem with some of my customers that uh, when you have a Ryzen session up and running and you use, uh, you use the solution like follow me. So maybe you are a hospital and you have one desk and you started your, your ITIL and then you start your horizon set, uh, session and then uh, uh, the, the, the people that are working on this desk uh, go to the next room, maybe uh, uh, in, a, in a meeting and then just take over the session. Then the problem is normally uh, that you can take over the desktop, but this little window, which is called VMware client pool, where you can also choose all your, all your virtual machines, this will, be, will just be there. So it will not be closed automatically but uh, today I found, I found something really interesting. So some of my colleagues from support point me in this. There's a registry hint in our registry, which is there since years. I definitely was not aware before. There you find it under, uh, under view. And there's once. You just need to enable this option. This means if a session is exited or disconnected, so like, uh, like I, I remember in store on Citrix when you when you log in in the storefront and then you just open your desktop and then if you uh, if you lock it out or disconnect it then the, the storefront session can automatically be closed and this is the same now for 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 Horizon if you just enable this box and uh, another device takes over the session then this pooling uh, desktop uh, uh, window will also be closed. It's really so cool, but uh, I was not aware of this. Yeah, I just ran into that uh, working on a, a special project. Um, we were looking at this, and this is one of the things the developer pointed out. Uh, yes. We're roaming that virtual desktop, you know, or or disconnecting it or whatever, making sure that once that uh, goes away, that it, it you know everything just kind of get closes out. But uh, uh, prior to that, it was last Friday, literally, when I found this out. So that's good to know that you've also come across yes. it. Yes, nice. sometimes, so like, like you know, we have, and uh, this is maybe also interesting stuff, we have 8,000 different registry keys in the UMS. So oh I know mostly, I think <laughs> I know mostly a lot about UCC, but like you said, like you see, 
I also even not know all the registers the keys we have here because not all of them are described in the knowledge base because otherwise we need a bigger server maybe for that. But sometimes <laughs> it's good to ask the colleague who have the right idea. So this is uh, really interesting. Yeah. Okay, I will yeah, also cool. discard this one. And now I want to do a favorite. So it's, uh, so it's you can see it live. I have here inside my UMS also a folder which is called Aisha Productive. This is the machine where I'm working on. So we should not do any change there because then maybe you lost me. But this is the configuration I have on this machine where I'm working because I control it in my own uh, in my in my own UMS. Because like I said, I trust only the stuff what I have. So here's this is my company device. This is my this is my Lenovo device, and there's all what is what is scattered. But I said what I said. This is the current version there, and there I have AVD up and running. And inside the AVD, it's also a lot more easier what you need to configure. Uh, there is, it's, it's a little bit like uh, Horizon. So from the plugin page, there's only currently available FabulaTech. So I have the FabulaTech webcam redirection up and running, and I have the FabulaTech USB redirection up and running, because currently the USB redirection from Microsoft is currently not supported. Uh, on the AVD session, because the problem is the handover from the Linux to Windows. We are working on that currently with uh, the, the guys from Redmond, but uh, it's not it's not uh, it's not officially uh, closed now. But if you have the Fabulatech webcam up and running, you can also have uh, all the stuff like um, the the base on uh, the deploying effect and the, the virtual background. So Zoom is integrated. Hey, hey, Lars, we got a question came in from Kevin. Um, he wanted to know if the speaker enhancement setting you were talking about is in the UCC guide. Uh, no, this one is not in the UCC guide. So there, there you go. It's a Zentegra exclusive, Kevin. We, you know, uh, <laughs> here it, only. It on, <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the community because I post also a lot of other stuff in the community. So I'm uh, also really active there and sometimes when it comes to this one but uh, it's on my it's currently on my list it will be in the next ucc guide very good and you know and we always recommend i mean any, anyone who's maybe newer to igel or if you're not involved in the community uh we, you know we always say on the podcast everywhere we view that as the number one tool in the tool belt um you know get get involved in the igel community um you know and you, you can find so much great information in there so um, yes. and, and, real, and, and, real... and even if you if you mentioned this, I would say, uh, please be, be please be fully honest. There is no time a stupid question. So sometimes the people, oh, I cannot ask this. So maybe this, this say, the, all the people say I'm done. No, anyone, no one of us have learned this uh, in the child in the childhood. So we all, all always grown together. And if you have a question, ask, ask that, and then you can take this uh, answer from the question with you to your company, and we can only grow together if we asking questions and improve things. So please be not shy asking what you need to know. And I definitely know there's a lot of people inside the community who are impressed to take, uh, take there and take you over and answer your questions and help you and get the right out of IGEL. Very good. I'm typing a response here, but uh, Kevin's also asking if we'll be posting this video. We do. We, we will send this out to everybody, but we also post it on our social media. We have a YouTube channel. Um, so, you know, everything you see today, we'll be able to you kind of go back and revisit. I'll probably be doing the same myself. There's so much information here that's so good. Um, hey, what real quick, uh, Lars, you know, while, you know, as we're into AVD, it's probably good to just even level set like where, you know, in the it's really more of a, a more recent thing that Teams is now supported. In, yes. in Microsoft Teams, or in, uh, I'm sorry, in Azure Virtual Desktop, which sounds kind of funny, right? Because, you know, you have Microsoft creates Teams, they also manage AVD. Zoom was available first, which was a little odd, but, you know, their Teams is fully supported now uh, in Azure Virtual yes. Desktop from, from an IGL endpoint. Yes, this is, uh, I think this is also something what was, uh, yes, a little bit crazy to me, because we have uh, uh, a lot of guys, uh, especially uh, Chris mentioned, we have Jeff Kahlberg in the US, we have uh, Frederick uh, Pratzlik in, uh, in Europe, who are working really close to the Microsoft guys. And so the, the I, I would say the, the, the complete AVD client for IGEL is a really good uh, corporation production from IGEL together with Microsoft. And we are working, uh, uh, a lot of times together, okay, what we can improve, what we can make better. And then there was the question, okay, when we can make it possible to optimize teams for AVD. And then there was a, 
I don't know there was a, a date uh, announced, but uh, I, I even also get asked it every day, uh, every month, okay, when will this, when this will be there? And then I think it was on 11.7.140, it was the first time integrated, but uh, we was not really sure, will it work or will it not work? And now with 11.7.170, it's also in the release notes. It's a little kind of a silent GA, so we don't have uh, made a lot of marketing on it. And uh, but uh, since I think since this version, I was allowed to also mention this in the guide. And so the most people are saying, okay, you have in, you have written in the guide how I, what I can do on ABD, but what need I activate on 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 the on the UMS? So there's just a easy answer: nothing. It's optimized, is enabled by default. There is no checkbox. You cannot disable this. This is just there. Yeah, the real key thing uh, I learned as this was coming to uh, general availability was uh, exactly that. On the IGEL side, I was just making sure I had the right firmware that the AVD client had the optimization components in it. But on the AVD side or cloud PC side, Teams actually has to be installed correctly. And this is yes. true on the Citrix side. Your guide talks about this is that you have to install Teams inside of the image so that it'll be uh, prepped and ready for that. And, and you know it's working when, when you get into Teams and you go into about version, if you see at the very top, AVD Media Optimize, you know that on an iGel device in an AVD session that it's ready to go. Um, I think you may have that in your guide and be a screenshot of that probably. I don't have the guide Yes, I, Yes, I will uh, only one time stop the sharing because the RDP, uh, RTP is a uh, window is on the, on the middle, so I cannot uh, go back and I will share it again. And then I will show you what you, what, I know what you mean, mm -hmm. because this is uh, sometimes the most problem. So I think now you see it. This is the guide again. And yes, we see that. We can, yep. we can easily go here and then we go, there's VMware and there's the Azure Model Desktop. And what is really important is, yes, like I said, there are some requirements. I listed all the requirements there. But at the end, the interesting stuff is to go there to select, get to the, the media optimization of the, if the optimization is loaded feature, that you go to this uh, points there, with the Teams application, go to the profile image and select about, then select version. And then if it's correctly loaded, then you see this you see this uh, option. You have Microsoft Teams version and AVD media optimized. And if it's in Citrix, you can see it's uh, Citrix uh, HDX optimized. And if this is not written there, then you have not installed uh, the optimization version. This is what you mentioned. Yeah, I'm gonna put a link uh, into the chat for everybody. This is going to Microsoft's website. Uh, so, May put these are going to link to the articles on how to properly uh, install AVD. Uh, I'm sorry, install Teams in your AVD image. Uh, let me see. It looks like one of those links did not come over. But this is this is there. This is also here there. So I have this in the guide. Yeah. Yes, this is here. So this is uh, before. Uh, it's a little bit uh, because we have. Uh, this is sometimes the the, uh, the the guy is asking me. Okay, you have forgotten to mention what we should do on ISO. No, I have not. There is nothing to do. The only this, this is the this is the only reason why the section is a little bit small because there is nothing to do on ISO. All what is to do is on AVD itself, and then there are some stuff. And I have also linked here the official article from Microsoft because I think that makes no sense to copy it out and copy it in because it's dynamical content which is changing sometimes. And then you have all the requirements there, and you have the installation for the right image here. And then there's uh, something uh, pre uh, preparation within the the, the, the keys. And then, like if you have that, this is what I mentioned before. There is this web RTC uh, service also available. And if you have the, it depends on which version you have, uh, it's which uh, features you have up and running. But it's all there. Uh, so I put a couple links in there. This is uh, again how to how AVD uh, how the team should be installed uh, in AVD image, and then more a general overview of teams on AVD. Hopefully, you all can see those links. But um, yeah, so we've hit upon Citrix, VMware, AVD. Um, what else did we, how we got time? We have just about 20 minutes left. 
or less. So maybe maybe what we uh, if there are some additional questions, maybe we can also open up some questions uh, if there are something. Yeah. Any WebEx users out there? Cisco VDI WebEx users? Yeah, you know, I think too, if you guys in the in the Q&A, what might be helpful, whether you have a question, obviously put that in there. But, you know, we, we're yes. curious to know, like, what is your what is your strategy, right? Do you have a, um, you know, are you are you looking to move into unified communications? Are you a, you know, a team shop on fat clients day and you're going into VDI? Um, you know, it might be helpful to kind of understand that. And and if you have any questions on on that front, please go ahead and ask. I mean, you have the right guy uh, here on the, on the line, on the, uh, Yes, like I said, ours. please be no shy. Yes, I can also you can ask whatever you want. So there's a lot. Uh, a came question. Uh, it's more of a comment. All right, Cisco <laughs> Teams is nice to use when Teams has challenges. Okay. Yes. Just I, I I agree on that. So you then know, I want. Uh, it's actually a one good. Time again, my and I will give you. It's fully exclusive now to you here, to you guys. I have also mentioned this to, to Patrick and Christopher, Christopher before. We are currently working on one on something special, and I will give you a little insight. I have to screenshot. I cannot give you a live demo because it's not uh, it's under NDA, but uh, because I have developed this by myself, so I can give you some insights. We are currently working on a solution where we want to integrate a tool inside iOS, which allow us to use blurring and uh, uh, virtual background on every communication solution and every cloud solution. So it's that more than you need just opti you need just enable an option in the in, in a profile to say I would I would have my camera with a blurring feature and then I want to use this with Teams and Citrix. And the answer is this one. I show you the picture. So I made this yesterday. Sorry for the quality, but this, uh, this I am on Microsoft Teams. This is the preview. So this was on uh, was was there was 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 done there. We have yesterday evening my time. We had uh, we had a session together with some colleagues from development, and with this tool. So this is the same background like I have with the blurring, and another stuff is the same option with uh, virtual background. And the virtual background doesn't come from Teams. It also doesn't come from Citrix. It came directly from iTrust. This is something new. What is in the pipe? So I think on that maybe, note, maybe would, uh, so if you wanted to call upon an image, you would you would from the UMS, you would would you put that background image into like the WFS directory? Yes, the idea the idea currently currently this is uh, this is not fully uh, fully developed. Yes, but uh, we we had. Uh, Currently, it's 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 placed in a opt in a opt folder under uh, under etc whatever. But yes, at the end we will provide an an extra section on that. Uh, I will uh, I have uh, uh, playing a little bit around. You can remember I can also show you. I would I would have the simple because I even like the simple stuff. What I want to do is this one. I again share my uh, UMS. I hope all you guys, you are aware, we have a section inside the UMS, which is called firmware customization. And if you go to firmware customization, and for example, if you create a new firmware customization, there's a possibility to have wallpaper. And here you can, can just choose the file, upload the file. And I would have this kind of window with a additional section uh, at a, a virtual background to a webcam. That's it. Nice. So one thing while we're here, uh, uh, it comes up often. Can I use the same camera with Teams and Zoom at the same time? Unfortunately not. This is uh, the, the short answer is unfortunately not, but there's also a long answer. I would say right. that uh, the long answer is there is a possibility, but it's not supported. Right. The, the, the short answer, yeah, what I tell people is like, you got two applications fighting over the camera. Somebody's yes. got to own it. It's it, so just, but what's interesting, I learned this from Mr. Kahlberg just the other day. I could plug in a second webcam and I could have Teams using that webcam and Zoom using the other one and they're not fighting over the camera. Uh, the, uh, you would be interested, you'd have to make sure your audio, right? Some of these webcams have audio built in too, but uh 
but that's if you need that that might be an option just plug in a second camera and uh, with that other trick you've mentioned earlier i can't remember which one it was where you could see which uh with the names of the devices for example uh, yes but uh, and I have I have like 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 I do this for my guide. I have here you cannot see this, but I have four cameras on my monitor, so I have to <laughs> plug in four at the same time because I change uh, I check with all the cameras if it's working, and then something I need to remember. Okay, which camera I had to take? What is now the Logitech or what is another one? So this is sometimes also struggling. But what you said, uh, I have uh, I have used uh, last time because on the notebook you have an inbuilt webcam. And then sometimes happens that you go and zoom and you activate your camera. Oh, it's black. Oh, that's was my fault. This is the Intel one. So you can change. Yes, I have it also here in my zoom that I can change between the Fabula Tech because, like I mentioned, I'm on AVD. I have the Fabula Tech webcam, uh, which is uh, which I can choose, and I have an, another uh, application installed from uh, uh, from Adobe. So the uh, Adobe, for the Adobe Creative Suite where I can produce some videos and there's also driver available. So you can have the same camera in two applications, uh, two times, and then you can uh, play a little bit around. So it's based on which driver you have installed. So that's a great point of Fabula Tech. This came up uh, when the team's uh, optimization was in beta. Uh, well, we had a partner that was, I guess, helping out with it or whatever and didn't have the right firmware build. Uh, and so they were trying to figure out, you know, if Fabula Tech was the option. They, they, when they, when they had it mm -hmm. turned on, it was working. But then, you know, they're like, do I have to? Is that the only way to make it work? And I guess that goes back to our webcam redirection com, uh, thing earlier. If you're using Teams optimization or Zoom, I should say, you don't want to do the Fabula Tech redirection of the webcam. Is that a fair statement for? Uh, I would say it depends. If you if you have Citrix, you don't need this. But if you have AVD, it's currently the only the only option for Zoom because otherwise you cannot get a camera. But AVD, you can only get a camera if you have the firmware attached up and running. If it's optimized. Got it. So Teams is okay, but if Teams you is wanted... okay because for Teams we developed our own stuff and they get also the camera because it's like on like the like the HDX uh, HDX video on Citrix. There's a client now which we provide, and this camera can be used by this client. But for Zoom, there's, optim there's the, the official optimization, and the official optimization needs uh, based on the USB redirection. And the USB redirection, what is there on AVD, it's only supported for Windows, so we don't can use this. Cannot use this, and this is the only reason why I have Fabula Tech up and running, because otherwise you cannot see me. <laughs> So this is, and, and there's another point which is really important because you mentioned this is have nothing to do with um, with UCC. But uh, when we are speaking about this additional tools, there is the, also the, the the possibility for uh, Fabula Tech USB redirection, because I also use this. I have an Epson Workforce uh, multi-function device with scanners with uh, with printers, and with this uh, Fabula Tech USB redirection, I can also put in bring in this. Printer to printer and scanner to my session because otherwise I can also not print from from AVD. So this is also a good point. And so there's a lot there's a lot lot more tools that are available. I hope on the roadmap is also to support the original Microsoft stuff. I think we are working on that, but I think there's there's some time uh, to come. I think it will be really better at the end of this year or maybe beginning early next year. Yeah, it, you know, we're we're huge fans of Fabula Tech here at Zentegra. You know, they're it's it's kind of a you know, but the feature gaps, right? And a lot of people want to go to AVD, but if they've been using Citrix for you know the last 10, 20, whatever years, I mean, they're they've been maybe we've all been a little spoiled by you know Citrix and VMware, how mature the products are. You're going into AVD, there is definitely some gaps when you come to peripherals, things like that. Right. Fabula, yes. Fabula Tech does a great job, they fill that gap in. And uh, yes. really give you a lot of functionality. So there's obviously an extra licensing cost, um, but you know we we know the guys over at Fabulous Tech real well. They're just super talented guys. Um, their product is extremely mature. It's been around for forever, right? Uh, Fabulous Tech. So um, really great stuff that they have over there. Um, and, uh, if anyone's you, interested, you know, reach do you, out. Do you know Printer Logic? I do. Yeah, Printer Logic is also a, a big partner of ours as well. It's Integra. Yep. 
because uh, I was blown away. So I, uh, I, I have seen uh, IGL routing program. Okay, there's Sprinter Logic, and I search for the whole uh, IGLS. Where is this? Pro where is the folder? How I can configure that? And then we had a we had an internal session last time where I invited uh, Sprinter Logic, and they said, Oh yes, there's a in the registry. There's something you need to activate, and then it's working because I really like you can print from IGL, you can print from VDI, and it's really easy to to configure. So this. There's a lot. There's a lot uh, additional tools. They are definitely worth to check. Maybe a good uh, good pointer, Chris. Uh, Printer Logic. We'll get them on the map here for for a call for our workshop. I think that'll be a great one. Yeah, um, printing is uh, golly, uh, great great one. Definitely as a if you can't print, somebody's going to call the help desk or complain to a C level. So you might as well <laughs> figure that problem out sooner rather than later. We've moved um, on past faxing. For the most part, but printing, <laughs> right. printing is still here to stay for now. Right. I guess here's the last one of the last questions, and maybe the audience is wondering too. Is your curtain really got an iGel hedgehog on it? Is that yes. behind you there? <laughs> yes. Yes. This is was also I think Jamie have also uh, Jamie Holt is there also. It's a colleague from Princess United States, uh, and he asked me in the teams uh, in the team chat, <laughs> "What the hell is uh, on your on your back?" What is, is this a hedgehog? Yes, there's a funny story uh, around this because, uh, like I said, I, I joined Eichel in December 2019, but uh, years ago, 10 years ago, I fell in love with hedgehogs at all, and we have a we have a non-profit organization in in our region where we help hedgehogs if they if they born and they are alone and they get not uh, not any support from the nature then we help them and we build them some little houses that they can grow there and so my my whole office is uh, with with such stuff like the, the curtains and i have some some plushies also there and then uh, sometimes uh, one one guy introduced me there's a company in germany called eichel maybe you can uh, you can jump there because i have not known this before and this was a win for me so i had all the I, I had all the marketing stuff before and now i'm an actual yes oh, well, you know, well, I, th I think you're mispronouncing it though lars uh you know i don't think i don't think it's it's called an eye gel or hedgehog in german I, I think you pronounce it a little differently uh, eagle, eagle yes eagle yes eagle yes the eagle eagle, eagle. Is, is, is eagle is hedgehog in german yes yeah very good well eagle and american is the greatest football team that's ever existed so i don't know uh, about that yeah. I, uh, I think there's some doubt. Uh, I certainly have some questions. Being a uh, Washington football team, Commanders, uh, formerly uh, other name team. So we can. Uh, we can we'll we'll put that. your team back in the mix when they actually have a name. Oh, I guess they do, right? Uh, you're, okay, that's good. So <laughs> Good one, uh, Patrick. Yes. So uh, I won't be available for the rest of the workshop the rest of the year. So. <laughs> Uh, uh oh, we've, we've caused some. Here we go. Uh, no friction. No, just kidding. We're all oh. friends here. Yeah, we're getting a lot of printer logic love in the uh, the chat here. Um, Lance, uh, who we've we've said hello to each other via chat, uh, just says he's the admin, and Brandon's looking at printer logic. So I think I think that's really a good one to maybe get on the map here and get those guys in. Nice. Well, and, and even what I want to add, if I on the, a little bit on the end, so it's it's not it's not shocking that I mentioned my email address on the guide. Yes, I'm working for Aisha. Yes, uh, I. Yeah, I need definitely anyone who pays for my work. This is this is true. But if you have a question or maybe you find something is wrong in the guide, this sometimes happens because, like like I said, it's uh, I write this in my free time, and sometimes you're under pressure and you get not all the things what you have, and then you publish this. And there was, uh, for example, one guy uh, two months ago. He said, "Okay." Now, you, you, you mentioned the new WebEx plugin, but when I click on the link, nothing happens. Uh, oh, there's maybe a, a, a bug in the guy. So if you find something, feel free, write me a mail directly. Uh, it's uh, Klockner at iShare.com. It's uh, written in the, in the, in, on the host page. So that you not need to be shy. And even if you maybe if you want to mention, okay, I have this in this environment and I maybe I have used this or the guy that is not working or whatever. I will answer definitely. Sometimes it needs 24 hours, but I will definitely answer. And if it's too much more information, then maybe I can guide you to presets or whatever one. But uh, mostly of the mostly of the of the people who uh, sending me a mail get an answer from me directly. That's not a problem. And there's uh, one thing additional, which I can also do, Patrick. But I'm not really sure uh, Patrick is on the list. I have. Uh, uh, a distribution uh, email list for the UCC guide so that every time when a new version is out, I, you can get a little mail from me 
So currently, I think there are 80 people on this list. All of them are in blind copy, so it's fully uh, fully aware of all the all of the of all the rules. And but you, if you want to add this, you can also send me an email saying, "Okay, please, Lars, send me to the list to the distribution list that I'm aware of when the new UCC guide is out, and then I will put you in the list." This is also possible. That's great. You know, I, I didn't know that existed. So if if someone wants to get on there, Lars, we would just email you and say, "Hey, can you add me to the distribution list?" And every yes. time updates come out, so that that's great. You know. Uh, anyone who's interested in this, I mean, th this is always changing, right? We, you know, it's it's, it's really important to uh, have the best up-to-date information. Um, hey, by the way, Daniel says uh, Lars and Printer Logic are awesome. So a lot, lot of Printer Logic love. I think uh, we all agree. Lars uh, knows what he's talking about. This stuff, uh, just just a great resource. Yeah. Uh, maybe one one thing to add uh, when we speaking about it, but I think I I I. I... I get. It. I don't get it. Uh, there was the. Oh, I need to go. Uh, I forget it. I, I want. I want for something that, but it, it's gone. Well, that's fine. It, it, it happens mind. to all of us. It happens. To, uh, what was I just saying? <laughs> I'm saying. I totally forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> yes. Plus, I think yeah. it's like midnight in Germany right now. You know, something like that. So, Lars is way ahead of uh, the rest of us. So, uh, you know, the I, you get me at the end of the workday. I've I've got absolute mush for brains. So, uh, you know, totally get it. Um, well, hey, we, we've got 10 minutes. Um, you know, if anyone has any questions, um, definitely, you know, let's, we'll, we'll give you a few more minutes. And, um, you know, I was thinking, guys, you know, as, as people are writing their questions in, um, you know, maybe we can make a suggestion to Zoom. I think maybe they should rebrand their product as Zoom, uh, Zoom Teams. What do you think about that? Mm, don't go there. We've got WebEx Teams. We've got Microsoft Teams. Why isn't Zoom a Teams? You know, I think Zoom, it was not, I, I, Zoom's I would, not a team player. I would, I would, not li I would like when, uh, I would better like if the vendor does not name the product same like the other vendor, because this is really confusing. I can even, uh, I can even mention to you a little, a little insight in my work. I get an email and a customer wrote, okay, WebEx is not working. And I said, okay, have you looked into your iOS? Yes, I have looked into iOS. There's version whatever, 42.4. Okay, I said, fine. Can you send me your configuration from your VDI? Yes, I can send you. So, okay, I know your problem. You installed uh, WebEx meetings and you activated WebEx. This is not the same product. These are two products. If you activate the wrong optimization, then you cannot get anything out of that. And then we uh, just uh, uh, jumping on a, on, a, on a session together and I mentioned him, okay, yes, the original WebEx was called WebEx Teams before, but it's now only WebEx. And the other one is WebEx meetings. And now came Cisco on this last month and said, okay, WebEx meetings will be declined in some time. Okay, fine. This is, for me personally, it's fine. Then we have only one, one additional product in the, maybe in, in the future. And I said, no, this is not happened. Said, what? We integrate Cisco meetings into WebEx. Okay, so can you repeat this? I don't understand. Yes. You have to install the WebEx client on, for example, on Citrix. And in your WebEx portal, there's a site, uh, a site portal where you can configure all your stuff there, cloud environment. There you can uh, uh, point a checkbox where it's uh, written, okay, I want to use Cisco WebEx or I want to use Cisco WebEx meetings, but the client which is installed is WebEx. And then I ask you, okay, and how we should handle this from IGEL perspective? Yeah, like before, you need to know if your customer wants to use WebEx meetings or WebEx. Okay, you you lost me, I said. <laughs> so it will be a funny future, I would say. I, I think there's, it, it almost seems like there's people working at these companies just trolling the rest of us by their, their name choices. Uh, yes. You know, like, like they get some kind of, I, and I can only imagine, I mean, again, this is speculation, uh, what the, the lawyers uh, who may be involved in these discussions between the companies are saying to each other. Uh, but it, it is a little confusing, probably more than ever a, a reason to get on that, that distribution list and stay up to yes. date and understand the difference between all these things. Uh, it's just, it's otherwise, it, otherwise, if I'm, if I'm fully confused, then you have no chance uh, to get us up running. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. Well, listen, you know, I, I don't see any other questions coming in here. Oh, here we go. Look at this. What is the best headset 
for UCC and IGEL? Oh, that's a man, that's question. a loaded question. I'll tell you. Uh, and, well, and the question is the best wireless headset. This is even an uh, additional point on this because we have also non-wireless. I would say this is uh, something like an individual answer. I would, uh, for, for, me, for me personally, there is no best headset because um, we have a lot of good vendors on the, on the market. So we have uh, Plantronics, for example, which is now also uh, uh, changing the name. All of them is like Patrick says, all of them changing the name every year and at the end you don't know, okay, who was this? Uh, Chapa, I think, is the only what uh, what had a name since before. So I I I own my. This is not a marketing uh, stuff. I own this by myself. It costs two hundred euros. This is a, a Chapa Evolve two eight five because of the long running time. Because like we see here, uh, I have all the day. I have meetings, and this is the the only one what have fourteen hours uh, 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 fourteen hours power without uh, getting reloaded. But I have also this, uh, the same stuff from Epos. It's an Adapt 470, 460, I think. It's just, I, it looks like the same. So there's no, no difference, maybe some on this one, or, but there's some, some design stuff. But what I can recommend is, and this is not because I, I get some money from them. This is because of my technical experience. If you use Epos, we have this Epos Connect Manager in IHOS. You will never get a problem with updating firmware because you can update your firmware on the headset directly on iOS. How cool that, is that? That is so cool. We did a we uh, we were doing an internal thing and and we we uh, I was asking that question and we we just literally like did we we said let's do it live and so we had the EPOS technical people right there and they they showed us how to do it. Um, to be honest, I need to go back and watch that video. But when we got it working in my lab, it was instant. As soon as I pu pushed out the firmware update for EPOS, I could see on my device, and it was literally like three seconds it was done, and 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 then the device, and then it registered back up into their console, and you could see that it now had the latest firmware. So that is a very, very cool story. I personally prefer, well, I'll just say, EPOS was very generous in letting me uh, test some units. I've got this one. Uh, very similar. It's long battery life. It's decked, so I can walk like literally like four miles down the street and still maintain a conversation. I'm kidding, of course, but I have long range with this. Um, I also got the standard Bluetooth option over the ear kind of uh, noise cancellation. But this is great. Yeah, I could you know be talking, talking. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I mean, uh, yes. it's got a mute button right here, and then they've got the little hockey puck stick thing, which is great for. Uh, you know, conference rooms and stuff. Uh, it's invisible mm -hmm. sometimes. It's got a really cool yes, superpower. Yes, yes. So they've got some great stuff. A lot of the vendors do. Um, and maybe, and, maybe one yeah. recommendation because I think it's really important because good that you say this. Um, I never want to recommend you using the microphone on the webcam. And we have this option in IGS under multimedia. You can disable the webcam audio from your webcam in IGS. This is sometimes a little bit annoying how this is going because we checked the parameters from the USB connect and then we can just blind out the microphone and then your experience is much more better because then the webcam is only a webcam without microphone and all the, uh, the audio signals comes through the headset. Yeah, it's a great, you know, and, and you know, I just kind of echo, um, you know, what you guys have both said. I personally recommend uh, EPOS as well. I, I'm actually using an EPOS headset as well here. Um, you know, I'm using the S SDW3, I think it is. And, um, you know, so I, I just moved into a new house. My office doesn't have doors on it yet. It's just a wide open space. Mm -hmm. um, the beauty is I can't really hear, like if my kids are outside the door, I really can't hear them. I mean, I kind of am aware of something. Yes, going you have on. this heal through option. You have, yes. Yeah, it's just great. Really, no, really yes. good noise canceling. So uh, I've been super happy with, with the EPOS headset and I would recommend it to anybody. Def definitely check them out. Um, and Brandon says, you guys are awesome. Wish my whole team could stop working and join in. Well, we think you're awesome, Brandon. Thank you for joining. Yeah, they can um, watch the video. They can watch the video. Uh, <laughs> film at 11, right? Whenever yeah. Patrick we gets really, around to it. Yeah, exactly. Well, marketing. <laughs> yes, and I really, I really appreciate what, what we are doing, just talking about stuff, what we're all doing. And because it's, 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 not, it's more like, like, not like only a job. I think uh, maybe you have seen this now in this, in this hour we have together that um, 
normally if you mention some stuff and all the times I, I find, okay, oh, there's a solution or maybe I can also mention you that. So maybe we can uh, spend the next eight hours together and I find something what I can mention to you. This is uh, just, 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 just living with this. So this, this hedgehog things and this Agile things. And I think I really like this cooperation together. I remember Patrick, when you was on Agile, was even that we uh, discussed this stuff and you had some questions about UCC. So we are a big family, I would say. Absolutely. And, you know, Lars, I really appreciate you jumping on here, man. This is this is great. I mean, just a wealth of information, um, you know, and, and, and yeah, just it's always great to have you. And we've been colleagues for a long time and, uh, you know, re really appreciate you taking the time, especially being so late in the day. We should probably end this. I know Chris and I both have hard stops. I would love to keep going, but, you know, we probably should get let Lars get back to his personal life here. Um, and, uh, and, you know, guys, really, thank you so much for joining. Um, you know, we had great attendance today and great back and forth. We really appreciate it. I mean, the fact that you guys join these things and, and kind of go back and forth, it just makes it fun. And, you know, we really look forward to these. So uh, thank you so much. Um, keep keep a uh, lookout for the, um, you know, any, any communications. What was that, Chris? <laughs> the voucher, the grub hub. The, the, the voucher. The Hopefully voucher. you got the voucher by now. Not the, not, <laughs> not the Use it or words. lose it. <laughs> Use it or lose it by midnight. Um, but hey, guys, just want to say thank you again uh, for everybody's uh, participation. Um, you know, if you have any other questions, reach out to us at Zentegra. Um, you know, we can we can get you in contact with whoever expert we need at IGEL or whoever, um, and we, we'd be happy to work with you guys on any initiatives you have. Um, so yeah, again, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll go ahead and close this thing out. Chris, Lars, have a great one. Man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Take care. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for the great session. Bye. All right. See everybody. <laughs>